So what does this all mean for you if you're actually looking for opportunities? The research then asks, you know, is it possible to build a portfolio specifically by investing in companies that are deep in these drawdowns? So to test this, they ran a back test. Pretty straightforward, actually. They took all the S&P 500 companies as of 2015. Okay. Tracked them for 10 years. And importantly, they adjusted for survivorship bias. Meaning they kept tracking companies even if they got bought or dropped out of the index? Exactly. Avoids making results look better just because the failures disappear. The strategy was simple. If a stock dropped 50% from its all-time high, invest $100 and hold. Just hold. Just hold. And interestingly, if it recovered, hit a new all-time high, and then dropped 50% again, they put in another $100. Okay, so what did they find initially? Well, first thing, it happened a lot. Out of 502 companies, 262 more than half dropped over 50% at some point in those 10 years. Wow, okay. And if you invested in all of them at that 50% drop mark, your average return was, well, Pretty similar to just holding the S&P 500 index, yeah. about 114% for the drawdown portfolio versus 123% for the index itself. So, okay, not exactly magic yet. Not yet. But this is where it gets really interesting. The results changed dramatically when they increased the drawdown cutoffs. They looked at deeper drops. Okay, so the magnitude of the drop matters. It seems so. Huh. Let's look at the numbers they shared from June 2025 back test results. If they set the cutoff at a 75% drawdown. Okay, much deeper. Much deeper. They found 91 stocks met that. Total invested would have been $9,500 across them. Nice. The final value of that portfolio, $23,903. That's a 151% return. And compared to the S&P 500 over the same period? An equivalent S&P investment would have grown to $20,467, a 115% return. So the drawdown strategy generated an alpha and excess return of 36%. 36% extra return. But you mentioned volatility. Oh, yeah. We'll get to that. But first, note... This alpha isn't risk adjusted. It doesn't account for the wild ride you might have been on. The median return, by the way, was 